Hello! This is going to be a bit of a more fun tutorial type video. Uh, we're going to be recreating the DVD screen saver thing, but in Curses, in the terminal. Uh, I did this on stream recently, and we're basically just going to go through the same process that I did to make that. Anyway, let's jump into it. Okay, before we get started, I'm going to show you what the final product is kind of going to look like. Ours is going to be a little bit different because we're going to add some better features to it. Um, Let's see, workspace babby, I think it was called t4.py. Yeah. This is uh this is what we made on stream. We're basically gonna do the same thing today. Um, but you'll see, you know, <laughs> it doesn't quit unless you control C. We're gonna try and fix that as well. Uh okay, let's get started with a nice little t.py. We're gonna be using curses. Uh typically you make a thing that looks like this. Uh, curses main, which takes a standard screen, curses dot curses window. Uh, we can return int sure. Name equals main. Raise system exit main. You wanted to add extra functionality in your main function, such as argument parsing, you could do that here. But we're just going to use curses dot wrapper, uh, which is going to actually we can just do this. Uh, curses.wrapper is going to initialize our screen for us, pass it in here, and get us going. And this is just kind of the hello world curses, just to get us to that standard screen.get character. Okay. And if we run this, you'll see that it prints hello world. Cool. <laughs> now, the first thing that you'll notice is we've got the cursor here. Uh, and we want to get color involved. This is the default curses mode, which, I mean, there are colors here, but it doesn't have colors. And in order to do that, we need to call some special methods. Let's first enable color. Uh, we'll do that with curses.startColor. I have notes because there's there's a lot of stuff we're going over today. Um, and I did curses colors in another video, so you can check that out as well. We're also going to use curses.use default colors. Uh, so now if we run this again, you'll see it's I mean, it looks less colored now, but it is actually using the default colors now. We're also going to turn the cursor off, and you can do that by doing curses dot curse set, uh, and this takes an integer for is it on, off, or some other value. Zero is off, so we're going to do that. So now you'll notice there's no blinking cursor anymore. Um, the next thing that we want to do is we want to um, actually change the color to some color that we want. And we're actually going to implement the same behavior as the other one. So when it hits the edges, we want it to change the color each time. So I'm going to make a special helper function that changes our color for us. Uh, I'm going to call that recolor. We can call it here as well. Dev recolor, which is not going to do, we're not going to return any value. And we need to initialize a color in the way, uh, we need to initialize a color pair. Init pair. We're going to conventionally call that pair one, and we need a foreground, and we need a background. Now, I'm going to pick a random number for uh, the foreground. That way, the text color changes as we go. Uh, we could also randomize the background, too, but it probably doesn't make too much sense. Uh, and so we're going to do random dot. What is random to? <laughs> Import random. Random dot. I think I want uh, random dot rand range. Uh, help random dot rand range. What does this do? Chooses a random item from the range start stop. Okay, so it does not include the end. Perfect. Exactly what I want. Rand range. Uh, we're going to pick a number between zero and curses dot colors. Uh, the actual one that I did on stream used um, true color, but we're just going to use the built-in colors because you can't really tell the difference anyway. And normally curses.colors will be 256. So this will be some number inclusive 0 to 255. And for the background, we want it to always be black. There is curses.color black, uh, but it doesn't quite do what we want. We also want to set the background. So we want to just set the default color. Uh, so we'll do standard screw dot, sorry, I'm checking this because I always get this wrong, bkgd curses dot color pair one. 
Okay, so that should get us that should get us a random color here. And you can see that it did set the text color to a random color. We still have this weird green here. Uh, and that green is actually based on my terminal emulator. It decides that this is black, even though it's not quite black. Uh, so we don't actually want to use this color. We want to use a different color. I happen to know that the hard-coded uh, 256 color cursus color is 16. So if we do this now, cool. Now we have actual black and this number here. And this probably fits on one line. So let's just reformat this real quickly. All right, cool. So we have our function which is going to, which is going to change our color. We have our text. We've disabled the cursor. Now we really just need to do the actual uh, screen manipulation manipulation stuff. Uh, and for that, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to basically bounce this text around and if it hits the edge of the screen where the bottom of the screen will change directions. Simple enough, right? Okay, for that we're gonna do an infinite loop while true. Uh, we're gonna sleep at the beginning so that it, uh, <laughs> so that it doesn't um, you know, just completely zip around and zoom. We're gonna do a little time.sleep. Let's just do 100 milliseconds. That seems fine. Import time. And we basically need to update the position of this. Uh, so let's just say x equals y equals zero. And we need to give it some sort of velocity. Let's say that it moves in, you know, one by one is probably the easiest. We'll do dx equals dy equals one. So it's gonna start moving in the down right direction. Cool. Um, and so we need to actually do that update here. Uh, and so for that, we're going to basically check if we would be at the edge and draw or and uh, change the direction. So for that, we're going to do if x is equal to curses dot uh, calls, that'll be the width minus the length of our string. Let's just say our string is Hello world, we could of course make it whatever we want it to be. Um, minus len s, uh, so if we are at the edge of the screen, the right hand edge, then we wanna set dx to negative one. Otherwise, if x is zero, we want to set dx to one. Uh, this will allow, to allow it to bounce horizontally. We we'll wanna do the same thing vertically. If y is equal to cursus.lines minus one, that's the last line of our screen then dy equals negative one, otherwise y equals, or elif, yes. Elif y is equal to zero, then dy equals positive one. Then we wanna update x and y, x plus equals dx, y plus equals dy. And now we can draw this text at its updated position. So we'll do uh, standard screen dot addster, uh, Curse is a little bit weird. It's y comma x rather than you know, normal coordinate systems where you would expect x comma y. And we can just write our string there. Uh, now, if we run this now, it's actually not gonna do what we want it to do. You'll see that it doesn't produce any output at all. And this is because curses by default is lazy. It does not draw the screen unless you ask it to uh, or unless you request a character. So requesting a character will automatically refresh the screen for us. So we actually need to manually call standard refresh here. That'll get it to actually draw. Now it kind of works. Uh, we have not erased the previous value here. We're also not changing the color, so we got to fix that. <laughs> this is kind of a kind of a neat effect, though. <laughs> okay, so when we're changing directions, we want to change the color. That's easy to do. We'll just call our recolor here, and here, and here. Now, if we run this, it should change the colors when it bounces. Wait for it, there we go. Okay, cool, so it does change the colors when it bounces. That's pretty nice. Uh, we need to make it erase the previous line though, because uh, otherwise we get kind of this solitaire looking thing, which is not what we want. Um, and what, how are we gonna do that? Uh, we can, we can move to the line that we just drew, which will be at y, x equals zero and whatever the y value is, and then do curses dot, uh, what is the function? Clear to EOL, I think it's CLR. Function's a little, the, the naming in curses is everything but consistent. Uh, it's standard skr, 
rather than curses. Let's try that. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so it's kind of working. Uh, but we don't have a good way to quit still, so we got to fix that. Uh, the problem with quitting, though, is if we ask for a character here, uh, like so, it doesn't move anymore. It does wait for us to enter a character, but um, doesn't it doesn't move on its own. So we need to put the character acquisition into a no delay mode. We can do that by doing, actually, let me check my notes for that because I don't, well, I never remember it. Uh, it is standard screen dot no delay true. So that'll put this into a no delay mode. So now if there's no character, you'll get a, an error back. So that allows us to conditionally look for a character, except curses dot error. We'll just ignore, uh, we'll ignore no input, but if we get some sort of input, we need to act on it. So. Let's just do return for now. Uh, that'll that'll be, you know, press any key to exit kind of thing. So now if we run this, we press any key, it should exit. Cool, perfect. Uh, we actually want to return zero since this returns integer. Okay, so that's a little bit better. Uh, what else do we need to do here? Uh, there's probably a problem where if I resize the window, yep. <laughs> oh, resizing the window causes it to exit because <laughs> uh, curses represents window, uh, size changing as as a key. So we actually need to check what this character is. Um, if wch is equal to curses dot, what's it? Oops, it's probably key resize. C U R resize. Oops, key resize. Okay, and there's a special function that we have to call when resize happens to change this curses.calls and curses.lines that we have below. Uh, and that is curses.updateLines calls. Again, checking my notes. Uh, and when we change those, we need to also update our, well, let's just show what it does first. <laughs> um, so if we run this and now we resize, oh, else return zero. Now we resize, it doesn't crash anymore, but now when it gets to the bottom, oh wait, that just worked. Oh, but if we do this, <laughs> so if we, if we resize while it's going down, you'll see we get this error with W move, uh, and that's because our X and Y are bigger than the screen, uh, so we need to adjust those. So we need to basically say curses, uh, or X equals min, Versus dot calls minus len of s or x, basically clamping this to the size of the screen. Uh, curses dot lines minus one y. So now, now if we do that, it shouldn't crash when I bump it off the bottom there. <laughs> it does uh, change the uh, <laughs> the color a lot when you do that, though. <laughs> kind of fun. Okay, uh, there is one last bug with this that I know of, which is if this text hits the corner right now, uh, oh, that's kind of nifty. <laughs> if the text hits the corner right now, uh, it will crash. Let's see if we can get it to hit the corner. It'll be kind of hard. Uh, okay, well, let's make the text longer <laughs> so that we can hit the corner. Let's just add a bunch of dots here. Oh, it picked black for the first color. Okay, so that did not hit the corner. Actually speed it up too, so that we can uh, reproduce this a little bit faster. Uh, but Curses has a little quirk. Okay, so that's still not long enough. And a few more dots there. Curses has a quirk where if you draw the bottom right-hand character of the screen, oh, it was so close. No. If you draw the bottom right-hand character of the screen, it, oh, we wanna make it taller by one? You draw the bottom right-hand character of the screen, it crashes. <laughs> and this is this is just curses, just like an annoying quirk of curses. Um, so we have to we have to fix this. Uh, there are two ways to fix this. One is to switch to instr instead of addstr. Uh, but instr has some quirks. Instr is insert string, whereas addstr is uh, draw the string and then put your cursor after the end of it. 
So this this will fix it. Uh, this has some quirks with um, Unicode characters, multibyte characters. Uh, sometimes it doesn't do the right thing. Um, so I tend to prefer Adster. Uh, but the other thing, the other way you can solve this with Adster is just by ignoring uh, curses on error. <laughs> and usually I don't recommend you know blind try accept here, but in this case it's. It's exactly what we want it to do. Um, but anyway, that's that's kind of our uh, our little our little thing here. There's of course another bug that's left to the user, which is if you make the screen super small, then the text just kind of uh, pieces out. <laughs> um, it's it's drawing off the left hand side of the screen, which I mean, I don't know. It's kind of a silly a silly thing anyway. Uh, but anyway, that's that's what I wanted to show you. Uh, kind of a a neat little demo of uh, making a DVD like logo thing, but in the terminal. <laughs> Hopefully, you found this interesting. If there are additional things you would like me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Button. Button. Are you not working? Hello?